Before we get started, I want to encourage you to subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications so that you don't miss any of the content that is released by Go Collect. And if you're interested, head over to Reggie Collects here on YouTube. Reggie here, your friendly neighborhood bodybuilder and comic book collector and the host of the Go Collect Speculation video. And I want to welcome you to another one of our episodes. In this video, I am going to spend some time reviewing blog posts that have been sent in to Go Collect and posted to GoCollect.com. But before we take a look at those blog posts, I want to take a moment to give a shout out to the recent winner of the Go Collect Friday Feature Giveaway. And this week's most recent winner was John Jordan, who posted up an awesome photo of Avengers issue number one. And John was rewarded simply by posting up uh, on social media and following Go Collect and tagging or using the hashtag Friday feature. He was rewarded with a pretty awesome book that goes right along with that Avengers book that he posted up on social media. And to get in the running for this giveaway that Go Collect does every single week, it's relatively straightforward. All you have to do really is to be following Go Collect either on Facebook or Instagram. You post up a photo of a book from your collection and you use the hashtag Friday feature. That's it. That's all that you have to do. So this first blog post, I think, is an interesting one because the blogger is essentially doing a little self-reflection. This is actually the second blog post that he has done on Ultimate Fallout number four. And so what happened was the blogger did a previous post where he basically said that he would not be buying into this book at about $800. And now two months later, he's kind of asking himself whether that was a good decision or a bad decision. And so I think it's awesome because taking time for self-reflection and evaluation, I think is pretty cool, right? Because so oftentimes people make predictions about things that will happen in the future, may happen in the future, and they never revisit whether those were good decisions or bad decisions. And so I definitely applaud this blogger for taking the time to, to reflect upon things that were said previously versus just letting those things go by. But in the blog post, not only is there the self-reflection, but the blogger is asking some provocative questions as to whether you should have bought in, whether if you bought in, did you do the right thing? And what do you do now, given where prices currently are for Ultimate Fallout? And if you're curious as to where the blogger landed and curious about what you might wanna do, again, this is a blog post that you wanna take a look at because it might spark some thoughts on your part. Like that first blog post, I think that this second one is also pretty interesting. The, the blogger is essentially asking the question of how you collect, whether you focus on the keys or whether you do full run. The blogger, for his point, highlights that he is essentially a key hunter. But there are some artists and some titles where he has opted to actually pick up the full run. And in this blog post, he spends time talking about one particular artist and one particular title that he seems to be in love with and recommends that you take a look at it too. The, the blogger highlights that there is an artist out there by the name of Dustin Wynn who does some really fantastic watercolor covers specifically for the Super Suns title. And the blogger is basically saying, you might want to take a look at this one because they're really nice covers. And it may be a long shot that there is actually some speculative value associated with these, but you never know what could happen down the road. So if you're into covers, if you're, you're into watercolors, um, you may want to check out this blog post. This one, like all of the others that I'll be talking about in this video, are linked down in the description. This next blog post is a long one, but it's also a good one. And the blogger spends some time talking about a problem that the MCU could have. And it's a problem that Fox Studios also had. 
and the blogger is basically asking the question whether the MCU, whether Kevin Feige can overcome the challenge of the Fantastic Four. Over the course of this blog post, the blogger makes an argument how the MCU is really about the slow burn. It's about the introduction of characters and the, the evolution of those characters over time, right? It, it's not about uh, a, a quick and dirty movie where you first meet a character, they gain their powers, and then all of a sudden they are heroes. It is a little bit of a slow burn when you get to, to experience these characters and you get to understand what motivates them over time and over a series of movies. The challenge, as the blogger points out, is that that's a little tough to do with the Fantastic Four who are essentially a family unit and they have to come together and you can't necessarily separate them out and develop them individually. You almost have to do it as a single story, as a single team where they are introduced and they gain their powers. And so it's really interesting because is there a way is there a way for the MCU, for Kevin Feige to actually introduce the Fantastic Four where they are essentially breaking the mold? They're doing things differently than they've done over the last 10 years or 20 movies or so. That is the question. That is the question is, can they introduce the Fantastic Four in a way that is different from how they've had their success? I do want to encourage you to take a look at this blog post. I think that this blog post is well written, it's well thought out, and it gives you some things to actually think about, which I think is really fantastic. The link to this post is down in the description. Check it out. So a little over a year and a half ago, Disney acquired the rights to Aliens and Predator. And about a month ago, maybe, maybe a little longer, Marvel actually acquired the rights to Alien and Predator from Dark Horse. And now that these properties, both the movies and the comics, are now with the House of Mouse, the question becomes, what is Disney going to do with these intellectual properties? And there were rumors out there that they were actually going to do an ongoing TV series on Hulu featuring aliens. And I don't really know where that project is and nor does the blogger know where that project is. But my, my, my thinking is that there is going to be something big that is going to happen. I am a huge fan of aliens and in fact, I was actually talking about uh, this movie, uh, Aliens 1, earlier today at work with some work colleagues. Oh, oh, my God. Oh, God. I am a huge fan and I am pumped to actually see what Disney actually does with these, these properties that they now wholly own. And the blogger actually takes some time in this blog post to examine what has happened with Aliens issue number one since the acquisition by Disney. And they point out in this blog post that a 9.8 had a last sale of $664. And they highlight that there are 43, 43 copies of a 9.8 on the CGC census. And there is a 5.2% return with this particular book. They go on to talk about a few other grades, including a 9.6, which had a last sale of $450. And with 109 on the census, this book has a massive return of 97.3%. When you look at the 9.4, it has a return of 85%. And even the 9.2 is in the double digits at 19.5%. And again, we don't know what the future holds for Aliens or Predator as it relates to Disney or Hulu, but my guess is that they do have some big plans. So you may want to go digging in your long boxes or your short boxes to see if you can find some of these books. I'll be honest, I have been doing that myself. <laughs> and so you guys, you may want to do the same. And if you believe there's some potential and you don't have it in your boxes, you may want to go out and pick yourself up a copy. So this next blog post, while a short one, I think is a pretty interesting one. And it's interesting because in it, 
the blogger points out something that is really fascinating, at least in my mind. And what they point out is that Kevin Feige and the MCU are capable of the unexpected. They are capable of taking an obscure character and plucking them from obscurity and putting them on the main stage. And you really don't know what they're gonna do. They are in many ways unpredictable and that is part of what makes speculating around the movies and the TV shows really, really exciting because anything is literally possible. But in this blog post, the blogger does a really good job of talking about the Red Guardian, who is a character that is closely associated with the Black Widow, a very prominent character in the MCU. But for his part, the Red Guardian is a character that you don't really know all that much about, at least until Kevin Feige and, and others started to talk about him, which put him on everyone's radar. But if you are interested in reading a little bit about Russia's version of Captain America, I want to encourage you to check out this blog post because while it is a short one, the blogger does a really good job of talking about this almost famous character known as the Red Guardian. The link to this blog post is down in the description. This next blog post, like some of the others that I've spoken about, is, is an interesting one that you may want to read. And it's interesting because it in many ways takes a look back at some announcements that were made in the past and asks the question of how those announcements affected the values of comics based upon where we are today. And the blogger basically talks about three movies that were announced at the San Diego Comic-Con in 2019. And, and the three movies in question were Black Widow, Shang-Chi, and The Legend of the Ten Rings, and Blade. And the blogger essentially takes a look at books that are associated with those three movies and or characters and kind of asks the question of how have these books performed over the last year since these announcements were made. And I'm not going to go into all of the detail around how these books have performed because I actually want you to read the blog post, but I am going to highlight some of the books that the blogger talks about. The very first book is associated with The Black Widow, and we are talking about Tales of Suspense issue number 52, the first appearance of Natasha Romanoff, the current Black Widow in the MCU. But if you've been watching the movies, you know that Black Widow went for a little tumble and it did not turn out well for her. And so while the Black Widow is a movie that is set in the past, the question becomes what happens to the Black Widow of the future? There are many that believe that another Black Widow will emerge and actually take up the mantle. And the blogger actually highlights who that character might be and also talks about that specific book. And I'm teasing you because I want you to read the blog post, so I'm not gonna tell you what the book is. I am, however, going to move on to the second movie, and that second movie is Shang-Chi, The Legend of the Ten Rings. And the book that benefited from the announcement at San Diego Comic-Con as it relates to this movie is special Marvel edition issue number 15. The first appearance of Shang-Chi, master of Kung Fu, and the main character in the upcoming movie. And then the third movie slash character that the blogger talks about is Blade. And the specific book is Tomb of Dracula issue number 10. This is the first appearance of Blade, the Vampire Slayer. So if you have any interest in the aforementioned movies and or characters, you want to check out this blog post, the link down in the description. And there you have it. We have reached the end of another recap. I hope that you enjoyed it. And if you did, I want to encourage you to hit the thumbs up button, leave a comment behind so we can mix it up in the comment section. I also want to give another shout out to John for winning the Friday feature. And I want to encourage you to actually enter this upcoming week because maybe you will win an awesome book and a shout out when we get to do this all over again.